Yes. Um, sounds good. Okay, we'll start. Good morning uh, from here from in Washington, um, DC, um, wherever you are, it might be afternoon or, or evening. So welcome to our webinar. Uh, the webinar is focusing today um, on sports. It's a tool for uh, integration, for education, for development of persons with intellectual disabilities. Uh, I'm Vlad Spencer, as I mentioned to you, I'm here in Washington, DC, um, here in the United States. Our co-moderator, Anna, is in Yerevan, uh, Armenia. This webinar is part of the International uh, Sports Programming uh, Initiative, which is a sports uh, diplomacy State Department uh, program, uh, and it's produced by World Learning and Digital Communication Network. I would like to mention that uh, here in the United States, we mark um, this year the 30th anniversary of the Americans with Disability Act of 1990. Um, this is a landmark uh, legislation, civil rights legislation that prohibits discrimination uh, based on disability. During our sports uh, diplomacy uh, sponsor exchanges, this is what we do uh, you know, during regular periods of time when it, there's no COVID. Uh, those exchanges are in-person exchanges and, and we always include, uh, if not for the whole program, uh, but at least uh, in segments, uh, dedicated to uh, these themes, sports and disability, because all of us should be aware, uh, should be engaged in support of these wonderful professionals we have with us today. Uh, we are proud to say actually that uh, one of our participants in the exchange, Mohammed, and we hope to connect with Mohammed, we had some difficulties this morning with the connection with Morocco, uh, is uh, one of the participants in our exchanges. And, and at the same time, other sports um, diplomacy exchanges, the State Department Global Mentoring Program has also some representatives here. Iman and Dave participated in that program. In Morocco, uh, we went to Mohammed's uh, various uh, programs uh, dealing with um, youth with Down syndrome. We spent um, you know, almost a day uh, there with him and with, with them. We experienced a lot, uh, lots of feelings. We, we learned a lot in the process. And since uh, our global audience uh, for this uh, webinars, that literally people from all over the world, include some experts, uh, but mostly people who just want to learn more about intellectual disabilities, challenges, also the amazing talents and skills, how we can all get involved and support, uh, and mostly what role sports plays, we invited uh, today a global panel. Um, that are ex experts from US, from Namibia, from Lebanon, India, Morocco, because this issue is of global interest. By now, all of you know, um, you know more than probably you want to know about Zoom as a technology. Uh, we count very much of your questions uh, in the chat room. A and keep in mind that our goal is not only the current conversation, uh, but also creating a network. So please ask questions, introduce yourselves, you know, it, it links that might be relevant for this for this team. Uh, when you don't speak, uh, please mute your mics in order to actually have kind of a natural flow of sound throughout the, the webinar. So again, thank you so much for, for being here for the next uh, one hour and a half. Um, and uh, we are looking forward to a, to a fruitful conversation. Now, Anna, you have the floor uh, for the introductory segment. Thank you, Vlad. Um, I'm sure that our webinar will be very interesting because the topic is really very interesting and important. So I'll go with our first speaker, Dave Lennox. He's a president and CEO of Special Olympi Olympics Washington State from US. Dave, welcome. I want to ask you to uh, introduce a little bit your work and the challenges that you, you face. So, um... Yeah, and, and my, my experience is over um, a long time and the challenges have changed over time um, because of the way society looks at people with intellectual disability. So when we first started off, every, we has kind of had this assumption that all of our athletes in Special Olympics had the same profile. Um, the co we were looking for a kind of coach that would be sympathetic, empathetic, um, and we'd just worry about mostly getting them out and getting them active you know, and all of that. Over time, it's evolved. And so now we need 
a variety, a spectrum of coaches. Um, and that's, the, that's kind of the challenge is that you, we, we've realized that our athletes are not one type of person. They are, a, you know, there are many types of people. They come to us for various reasons. So you need, when you're coaching, you have to build a team of coaches. Some coaches are, are a catering to the athlete who just wants to get out of the house. They just want to get away from their parents for a minute because their parents are overbearing and constantly focusing on their disability. <laughs> um, and they want to be with someone who, who sees them as an athlete, even though they may not be very accomplished or even know the, the basic skills. Um, some want, really take fitness very seriously. Others really want to compete and they want to win at all costs. And having a, having a group of coaches who can cater to the different needs of those athletes is probably one of the biggest challenges that we have um, in doing that. And then figuring out how to motivate them. It's, it's like solving a puzzle um, when you have a team because it's, it's not monolithic. It's, they're, they're not one group. Not everyone has the same goals and it's, it's a hot mess, but it's a, but it's a fun hot mess when, you, when it all works together. Okay, thank you, thank you, Dave, very much. Um, our next speaker is Mohammed, but I think he's still having difficulties to connect to um, to to us. So I'll go to Charles Nyambe. He's a president and managing director, Special Olympics International Africa Region from Namibia. Charles, welcome to our webinar. Please tell us a little bit about your work and challenges. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I, I joined Special Olympics uh, initially as a coach, actually, a volunteer coach while I was uh, had another job. But then when I became full-time, I then noted. So I, I understood Special Olympics from a coach's perspective. And uh, so when I went into the leadership, into management, I pretty much understood the challenges that, that we have. And like Dave Lennox shared, it is, it is also... Uh, the issue of coaches and generally, especially in Africa, generally leadership uh, for sustainability of these programs that are, you know, um, you know, running Special Olympics in, in the organization. And uh, even when I joined, I was asked to coach a team and I didn't even know that it was a Special Olympics team. And when I went there and I started coaching them, I realized that I was taking off because that team had no coach. The coach had abandoned that team. So that is the trend that we found that the, the expectation most coaches would like to associate with themselves with elite, elite, elite at all times. So, um, so we have to get people that, that are empathetic to find them. So the, the, the training process has to be in, held in such a way that the, you bring an understanding and you bring, you know, emphasize on empathy so that uh, the people that are going to be, uh, to be working with the athletes have the understanding. Governments too, in these countries, mm -hmm. feel this is a forgotten popular, it, it's, it's non-existent. Disability to them is what you see. Intellectual disability, unfortunately, is not visible. So the, the family members, tend to just put their athletes at the back of their house and, and, and because, because there's, a, I mean, they, they, there's no room for them to do anything in society. So government forgets. So that is a challenge for athletes. They cannot speak for themselves. And, and that's why we're now emphasizing on athlete leadership so that the athletes can speak on, on their behalf and they can be seen by the governments and by people when they're participating and so on and so forth so that they begin to understand that, yes, there's a population that we're responsible for. And as much as we're doing this for Paralympics, which is physical disabilities, we have to do this for, for those with intellectual disabilities. Uh, Charles, do you want me to share your uh, presentation? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. If you can just share, here's a... Uh, you know, we have deep-rooted beliefs in Africa of, uh, you know, people with intellectual disabilities that they have, uh, you know, you know that uh, they have, it's, a, it's a population that is sexually abused and so on and so forth. So um, if you can put it in the, in the presentation mode quickly. Uh, this is a young man in, 
uh, you can move to the next slide. I'll share a, 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 in the refugee camp in Tanzania, as you can see, 14 year old servant was chained by the mother because the boy had an intellectual disability. And the mother said the reason for, the, for chaining him is that, hey, he might disappear, he might run away. We can go to the next slide. And then, uh, next slide, please. As you can see, when we learned about him, the first thing we did was to take the chains out and then move on to the next. That was uh, educated the mother and took the chains. And then uh, the athlete here, as you can see, we replaced, we introduced sport. Sport is the key and it's the basis of our work. Next slide, please. And then we trained other refugees in the refugee camp as coaches to bring, the, give them the responsibility so that they themselves, when we are not there, they continue to, they, that ownership. And that was the intervention. Next. So one young man, you know, brought all this and then we had partnerships, uh, our sports partnerships like, like Lions Club donated equipment, which was taken to the camp and those are you know, religious leaders, we put them in leadership to say they're going to run the, the program for people with intellectual disabilities. Next, please. And then family members are very, very important to involve. So we involve family members because for us to have access to their children, families must understand and say, yes, we, it's a credible organization. We can see the change happening in our children. Let's do it. Next slide, please. So the involvement of family members is important. And then we brought competition right there in the camp, a, an Olympic competition in the camp. Uh, next slide, please. And then as you can see, we involved the entire community in organizing so that they all begin to appreciate people with intellectual disabilities. Awareness can be achieved in so many different ways. One of them is involved in the, the community and the administration. Next slide, please. And as you can see, we use what we call unified sport, those with and without intellectual disabilities, because if we don't mix them, they, they will, those without intellectual disabilities, who are their, their age mates, will, will rather begin to vandalize and say, why are we not involved? So we involved all of them. So it became a community sport, but then it reversed the stereotype behavior because when they see those with disabilities playing, it's wow we didn't know they had skills like just like us. Next slide, please. This is the unified approach. And then the competition, as you can see, they're right in the camp. And next slide, to create visibility and they received awards. We, we are an Olympic organization, whether it is in the camp, in the poorest village, we do this to award them, so to, to, to give them that highlight to stand on the podium and receive medals. Next slide, please. Next slide. I, that young man here in green on the far left is Malaki, the same young man who was changed. He participated and look at him now. Next slide, please. Next slide. And uh, their, their exposure, competition and spectators. Next slide. They keep going. And then we had a healthy athlete screening because most of them have never seen a doctor. There's Malaki there, you can see him. Integrated, the, the mother did not need chains anymore. Sport had liberated this young man. Next slide, please. And that's the highlight, the next two slides, the highlights. And then there we are, he was accepted by the family and in the community. There's Malaki and he attended World Games in Abu Dhabi and he's with the chairman there. Uh, Dr. Timothy Shriver at the games in last year in Abu Dhabi. And uh, final slide, coincidentally, last year, we, late yesterday we received this, this announcement that uh, the filming of Malaki ESPN went to the camp and filmed him. It won uh, the tale of the messenger. It, it won the film, won the, the Edwards and Murrow Award for National uh, Feature Reporting and on Saturday, the 17th of October, uh, because it, it touched so many hearts when they see how, how sport can transform, how sport can, can bring you know, liberty to people and families and the community. Yeah, you can go to the last slide. I think that's where the website is. Oh, there's a link there. You, when you get that, you can actually watch the video of that link there. You can watch the film of uh, 
the film that I'm talking about is a really good film to see. It's a six minute film. Can you post it in the chat, Charles, when you finish speaking? So everybody okay, I'll, po I'll post it in the chat, thank you. All right, and finally, the last, last slide. Next, that's the website there, specialabix.org, if you'd like to, to see more of uh, uh, what we do. Thank you. Thank you, Charles. This is amazing what you do and what you did with this uh, kid's future. This is great. Thank you very much. And we'll go to our uh, next speaker, Mohamed Munir. Uh, he's an educator specialist, Moroccan Association of Persons with Down Syndromes from Morocco. Uh, as Vlad mentioned before, we saw him working with the kids and they are really amazing. We saw them playing uh, football, soccer, and they are really good. So I'll let Mohamed to, to introduce the program a little bit. Mohamed, welcome. Uh, hello, everyone. First, I introduce myself. My name is Mohamed Munir, and I work as a specialist educator with people with special needs for 70 years now. For all of this period, I work, I had a very, of work, I had a very strong and close work connection with Special Olympics in general and the Moroccan Special Olympic, Olympics. Since the very beginning of my career, working as the sport responsible in our organization, the Moroccan Association for Sports in the People with Down Syndrome, my presentation will be short today, and I hope I will be bringing an additional value by sharing our Moroccan experience and two main focus, which are inclusion and independence. Because for me, it's, it's very, very important to speak about inclusion. Because in the sports in general, in all the world, you find the stadium and the place just for the person with disability and the place for the others. This is, for me, it's a big problem. Yes, Special Olympic, you have now the problem to unify the game. It's, 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 it's a beautiful uh, program, the unified game. But in reality, you find always just the person with disability in the center, in the stadium. For me, it's, it's, it's not good because inclusion, you must be together with the others. We must be together in the school, in the, in the, in the, in the college, in the, with neighborhood, in the, in the stadium. This is for me, it's important. Look, you must be all society, me, you, and the, all the world working for this concept to be war, the kids must be to be together all the time, not just one moment in the years, because it's, 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 it's not good. Don't you must be help the, the person with disability to be together with the others, to be together with others, not just in the stadium, but in all the place in the life, in the school, because you now you find the class in the school, but the class just for the person with disability. Or you can find a science just for the person with disability. For me, it's it's a sort of uh, discrimination, disqualific disqualification of this person. You can't give him a chance to be with the others because when you give him this chance, you you you, you give him the culture for the difference. I am different. You are different, but you must be together. You must be accept me. I am I am. Uh, I have, I have some potentiality, I, I, I am I'm black, I'm Christian, I'm Muslim, but I am a person firstly. Look, you must accept me like a person firstly. After, yes, I, am, I have my, my, my character, I am, I am down, I am autist, I am, I am Muslim, I am another region. But the first, I am the person, you must accept me like a person. This is, for me, it's important the inclusion, the, 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 to, to, to work for this, for this sentence, for this concept, inclusion. In Special Olympic, it's very important, unified, unified game. It's very, very, very interesting program. You must all work with this program. The second concept is independence. You must be coach 
and the educator work for this cancer. What, what, is, what, is, what is independence? You must be give the possibility of the kids, of the athlete with dis disability to, 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 to take with himself. You must be coming if I have uh, not so 20 years, you're not my parents come with me to the stadium. If I am 20 years, you must be work with educator. This athlete come alone at the stadium. This athlete will arrange the material alone. You can help him, the coach, help him to arrange the material alone, to, to take her dress alone, because the problem, the coach sometimes help up the poor person. He can't do that. I can help him. When you can help him all the time, help him, help him. With the time, this person can do some, some small things like uh, take dress, like, uh, like, uh, like coming alone. Those, for me, independence, you must be mixed between independence and sports and the same thing. The coach and the, and the educator, you must be work together for give the, our athletes with special needs this possibility to be, to be, to, to be, to be, to be, to be indépendant. Donc, questa, uh, this, is, this is my idea. Donc, uh, I don't know if, if, you, if you understand, because my English is not, uh, not very, very good, but I try to give you what I have, an idea. Here in Morocco, we have, we have lots of experience to, 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 to include the, the, the person with disability with the other in the school. In the, in the art, of course, in the in, in sports. Donc, uh, the, the, uh, the role of in, for included is being part of all society, all activity with all of the rest of the world within our community, our neighborhood. And, and of course, same in the stadium. You should not have a stadium for sport only for people with special need. But rather, we should be given our special kids the same right to practice sport and play with the other kids. In playing with the other kids, you are also learning, learning from each the other, and is is very important to that we teach our kids since in very early age about the the culture of difference what we should learn to accept the others with their difference because at, at the end we, of the time we are all different. This is our value that we should all to teach to our kids. By doing so, so you won't really struggle in the, in the future to make the, the people with special needs being part of our inclusive easily in the, the society life of our life. Donc, uh, uh, donc for me, this is, this, is, um, this, is, this, is, this is very important. Donc, and thank you very much for your listening. Thank you. Thank you, Mohamed. That was really very good what you said. And I think that most of us agree what you know, with your ideas. And I really remember this a very tasty kitchen in, in, in your organization that the kids were running and cooking. That was really amazing. And I remember every, every moment in that organization, you are doing really good. Thank so you. I'll move to our next speaker, Ima Saba. She's a president uh, for Adaptive Sports Center from Lebanon. Iman, welcome. Please tell us about uh, your challenges about your work in Lebanon. Hi, everyone. Uh, so I'll share my presentation directly. So I've, uh, I already put everything in it. Is that okay? Yeah, you can share your screen. Okay, so I'm going to introduce myself. I'm a basketball player. I'm also a PE. I'm a, I'm a physical educator. I participated as a, at the GSMP in 2018. I'm also a certified coach by, SO, by Special Olympics Lebanon. We participated in Austria, 
and uh, this was uh, last uh, in 2019 in Abu Dhabi. Uh, I also have uh, my own wheelchair uh, basketball team, and I was last year uh, the assistant coach of uh, Lebanese national uh, basketball wheelchair basketball team. Uh, I'm going to speak a little bit about intellectual disabilities. Uh, according to the WHO, it defined by the presence of incomplete and arrested uh, mental development. It is principally characterized by the deterioration of concrete, the functional of stage development and contribution in overall intelligence, such as cognitive language, motor and social uh, functions. Uh, it has limitation of communication, personal care, uh, home life, uh, social skills, utilization of community, self-governance, uh, health and safety, functional academies, leisure time and work. So its classification is mild, moderate, severe, and profound. Its range is uh, with the IQ level, approximate, uh, the mild goes approximate between 50 and 69, moderate between uh, 36 and 49, severe between 20 and 36, profound uh, is less than 20. So when you talk about special uh, sports for intellectual disabilities in Lebanon, we talk about Special Olympics. Uh, special Olympics was founded in 19, uh, we started with 100 players, now we have 9,800 players. Before Special Olympics, uh, we knew nothing about intellectual disabilities and uh, and the players really doesn't even participate in anything. Uh, actually, people were shy even to send their players, uh, their uh, children out outside their home. They were kept locked inside their houses. Uh, in Lebanon, we have uh, 21 summer games and four winter games. Summer games such as football, basketball, swimming, powerlifting, bowling. Uh, winter games such as cross country, snowshoeing, alpine skiing, and floorball. Uh, in Austria, we, we participated in cross country and snowshoeing. We, we had like uh, uh, six medals for Lebanon. Uh, they have their first participation there. Uh, some, some some of the players. Um, and when, when they returned to Lebanon, uh, well, they actually, one of one of my students, two of the, those students are, uh, are from my school. So when they returned to the school, we made a huge party for them. Uh, usually uh, students, it's an, uh, we have two schools at one one place one for the students with special needs and the other for the regular students well the regular students used to run away from them now after they see them they coming uh, have the, those medals uh, they they start to look out for them like look uh, they have medals they wa went out from lebanon and won their games so they uh, they start to have like friendship with them and get to know them even better that's all because of of the of the games uh, and also we have other programs uh, unified sports after after that we have like uh, include uh, inclusion sports uh, like in football and basketball and other games we have volunteer healthy athletes and health communities we have one of the of the best uh, uh, doctors with us, like uh, Dr. Abdurrahman Bizri, he, he's uh, now recently one of the best uh, uh, doctors who's talking about COVID-19 and the Unified Schools programs. Uh, we are entering the schools and uh, explaining more about Special Olympics and including more schools with us. And families not working, we work with families, not only the mother and father, we're working on also the siblings. So we're working as a whole on the on the, uh, on the player. Uh, the benefits of, uh, of, of playing, it promotes a healthy lifestyle, build discipline, self-esteem, self-force, confidence, and it's really shown. Uh, this is a unified team, football team. This game was in 2011 when we went to Greece. Uh, it improves uh, psychological well-being, reduce anxiety and improve mood, uh, improve physical health, decrease risk of, uh, of uh, contracting major chronic diseases, 
success, such as uh, heart problems, stroke and cancers, uh, improved the mental and emotional well-being, especially in preventing and uh, elevating depression, anxiety, and coping with stress, increased social network and relationship, uh, enhanced uh, cognitive functioning and learning. And now for the challenges. Uh, well, in Lebanon now, we have challenges in finding volunteers. Now, most of the volunteers are looking for uh, uh, for, for more pocket money work uh, because of the economic crisis that we're having. So we're having a little bit uh, problem having some more volunteers. But uh, uh, after uh, like uh, telling more about our program and uh, seeing the, the athletes and uh, working with them, uh, some volunteers are really coming and enjoying working with uh, the Special Olympics. COVID-19 is a big challenge. Uh, uh, there's no physical activities for the children. Okay, we're having some visual uh, virtual meetings, uh, which we are sending some videos for them, but uh, we don't have like a real tracing for them. Like we don't know if they really having, uh, have doing those uh, activities or not. Uh, also, it's affecting their mental health and physical health uh, and uh, other problems like fundraising. There's a lot of NGOs now in Lebanon uh, and everyone is selling um, their ideas like uh, for NGOs for cancer, NGOs uh, for a lot of uh, uh, like for this uh, crisis, economic crisis that we're having, uh, the explosion that we have recently. So it's been tough uh, for us to, to have uh, fundraising and uh, social integration. Uh, despite everything that we're doing, is we still have people that don't understand uh, really what uh, uh, what this means. Like we still have some bullies. We still have uh, some people that they saying that look, this is disabled and this is Down syndrome and this is I don't know what. So. Well, we still have like to do more awareness and uh, and have more people integrated more in these games and explain more and more for uh, for those players. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so fascinating presentations. Please continue to ask questions in the chat room. And we'll back. Sorry, we have we have one more one more speaker. Sure, yeah, yeah, but if, we, if I could interrupt you for two seconds. Um, you know, so um, our uh, partners at the State Department, uh, Sports Diplomacy, Ryan Murphy is, is here, and, and I would like him to say just hello. His background is in sports with disability, and, uh, and then we'll get back to the lineup of speakers and, and to, the, to the chat room. So, Ryan, if you could hear us. Yeah, hey, everyone, can you hear me? Yes. Perfect. So I just wanted to, to say hi to everyone. Um, sorry, I might need to leave the session a little bit early, but as Vlad said, I worked for Special Olympics International prior to coming to the U.S. Department of State. So I have worked with Charles and Dave. Dave was actually my boss who brought me into the Special Olympics world, um, as well as Kester Edwards and a few others that are on this call. Um, so I, it's certainly a passion of mine. I'm glad that we are able to, to do a session like this that is focused on uh, sports opportunities for individuals with intellectual disabilities specifically. Um, and just thank you really a lot to all the panelists uh, for, for taking the time and, and doing this session today. So I will be listening in the background and I appreciate all the support out there. Thank you, thank you, thank you, uh, Ryan. Anna, back to you. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. So we'll have our last speaker, Manisha Verma. She's a manager research training and development skill council for persons with disability from India. Manisha, welcome to our webinar. Hello. Uh, th thank you for inviting me. Thanks to all the panelists they have put up. Actually, when I was listening to all these panelists, I realized the problems everywhere are the same. The challenges are same. Uh, whether it's America or Africa or India, the challenges the persons with intellectual disabilities are facing the same. It's lack of awareness, COVID-19, restrictions due to that, and uh, 
uh, there is also a challenge like uh, because parents are overwhelmed with therapies and the schooling the sports kids uh, takes a back seat for uh, persons with intellectual disabilities um, i have been a prince i have been uh, uh, managing a school also for uh, uh, specifically for uh, special needs children and uh, what we lacked was the proper infrastructure uh, in india the you have big cities and rural india which is really backward and uh, uh, a lot of uh, issues in uh, terms of accessibility to the infrastructure for proper sports infrastructure so i was uh, also consulting ministry of social justice and empowerment on development of uh, a specialized post training facilities for uh, uh, all the dis- uh, persons with disabilities it uh, the project was passed last year and uh, right now it is in development stage in two states in madhya pradesh and in meghalaya so um, gwalior project has already started and uh, for uh, detailed project report is being prepared for the shillong center the aim was to uh, cater to the special olympics to be held in 2022 but now i think it will uh, it has take, uh, it is the work is still going on so uh, that is what india is doing for uh, incorporating these challenges and uh, then we have special organizations like para olympics of uh, para olympics special olympics bharat and there is one uh, divyang maitri sports academy in bangalore which is working exclusively to train the children for intellectual dis- disability uh, and uh, surprisingly despite the challenges india has performed very well in abu dhabi winning 385 medals in special olympics and uh, there's lot to be done there's a lot uh, there are lot of challenges ahead which we need to co- incorporate main which i see is um, lack of awareness and lack of accessibility here in india especially where we need to work on that so that the children come out of their homes and uh, reach these centers uh, tra- we have got very good coaches but uh, infrastructure in terms of infrastructure we lack so hopefully we'll come uh, will and uh, there is one thing also um, in india like challenges are so many uh, like schooling uh, uh, going for therapies so there is not a um, the sports take a back seat kind of it's a extra curricular activity it is not the main activity one thing being no uh, money is not Uh, you can't earn much in terms of cash from sports so if that challenge you start having uh, coaches uh, which are like mild uh, coaches with mild intellectual uh, disabilities or other disabilities so probably it will uh, it uh, becomes a career choice then it beca- uh, then sports will take off in india what i felt uh, that's all from me uh, i like to hear other um, persons views and take up questions thanks thank, thank you thank you manisha we have questions i will go to vlad now definitely so uh, thank you so much for yeah. this overview as you could see um, you know the whole world is here and and that's that's very important because um, these experiences are common experiences and there is a lot of uh, experience to learn uh, from from one another Uh, a couple of things I want to mention before get, getting into questions. Uh, so, World Learning, the organization that we are we are, we are part of, has also a, a very strong program, um, you know, dedicated, you know, meant for um, persons with disabilities. And so, feel free uh, in the future to reach out to us as well. We like to be part of this conversation, and we like to be your partners in whatever you do. In addition to this, there is another organization that we are very close to: Sports and Development. and they have launched recently a call for articles in preparation for the international day of persons with disabilities which is on december 3rd uh, i will post in the chat the link to the to the call and please feel free to um, to to write to them to connect to them and write articles based on your experience now one uh, question that was addressed to some extent by by uh, iman but uh, you know came a couple of times for example from tamara gerber from switzerland Uh, I think also uh, 
uh, Timothy, uh, is uh, what is going on during uh, you know this COVID period. So the idea that you know everybody's trying to obviously improvise, we are part of this with this webinar. But I assume uh, that that you also have experiences in relation to COVID. What to do? Um, you know, uh, you know, dealing or, or or helping supporting persons with intellectual disabilities during COVID, and what is the impact? So we heard from Iman more or less, uh, you know, about this topic. Maybe somebody else could could also like like to contribute. Like, for example, let's start with Charles, and then we'll take it from there. Uh, thank you. Yes, uh, when uh, we know COVID has was a challenge, and we are a you know an organization that. Uh, you know, is with deals with crowds. It's sports. You have to meet. You have to interact. And and especially in Africa, not most, not many of our athletes have access to digital. So what we did in the Africa region and uh, in parts of the world is to develop what you call what we called Fit Five cards. These are designs, and I've got a sample here. I can show you. This is a Fit Five card hanging on, them, on a ring with a linear there. And with all the Fit5 the activities, uh, the Fit5 activities are on the, on the card. So each athlete, what countries did programs is to, to put a bundle like this. And on the back, there's health information for healthy athletes, how to keep healthy, hydration and so on and so forth. And uh, the COVID-19 information right here. So what athletes did, I mean, programs did was to receive these and print them in small bundles like this, distribute them and translate them into different languages. So as we speak during the COVID-19 and we involved family members, that's why I said earlier in my presentation that family members are very important. So family members have become the coaches by using this, working with their athletes at home and using this card. But those that have access, if some of them have their digital access, these have been sent in electronic format and there are videos uh, that, that have been distributed too. So some of them are using videos, some of them are using cards so that, that those that don't have access. So this is the intervention we, we did in the Africa region and more, some of the uh, places in, in Special Olympics in other regions also uh, have also, like, like um, Asia Pacific has also uh, done the same. That they are using these Fit5 cards to, to provide them to athletes for, for for, to continue to be fit, keep fit until until such a time when it will, it will be post COVID and and uh, safe to get back on the field. Yeah, I let's hope that hear, helps. Let's hear more more ideas. Uh, these are very valuable ideas for everybody involved here. Just because you know we are all over the world. You know, in Singapore, South Asia, Latin America. So uh, let's hear more. Uh, Dave, any any thoughts about this question? Yeah. Well Make sure. Yeah, one of the things that we did um, in the, the state of Washington, and, and I think it happened across the U.S., was like Charles says, we realized that while we have many athletes that do have digital access, and we were able to set up virtual competition, so we could send the the guides out. Um, we sent the Fit Five as well. Um, but what we did was we went to our sponsors and we we created a bag, uh, a home training kit. Um, and we sent that to coaches because we were struggling with how to keep coaches engaged through COVID because they couldn't get together with their athletes. So we said, here's a kit. Please deliver this kit to your athletes. You can drop it on their door. Um, it has the Fit5 cards in it, um, but it also has, you know, stretch, you know, fitness resistance bands and, and those kinds of things. Um, just to make sure that we kept the athletes engaged and felt like there was still a sense of community and so then we could we could work on with social distancing. They could do some training one on one with coaches. So we the, the main objective was to get them so that they were still active and doing that. Then we set up the, the virtual competitions and people that did not have digital access could have a coach that would go to them, put their scores on paper and then go back to where they had digital access and enter it. Um, so then we were able to, you know, present online a competition. We had virtual awards um, and we mailed each of the athletes um, their medal um, at the end of it. Um, and we had a digital dance party. Um, so if you know people that did have access could, could be on. We had several athletes from Africa who were in our Washington games. 
uh, which was very exciting. Um, what we have found is that where there is digital access, the COVID um, force of making us draw back a little bit um, has made us kind of have some time to stop and think about the global community of people who, you know, and our athletes have said, you know, stop whining about all this social distancing and, and all of that. We have been isolated and marginalized our entire lives. We're used to not being seen. We're used to not being out and doing things. And, oh my God, will you people stop whining? Just get out and you know, do what you can. <laughs> you know, so the athletes have been um, very forceful in, in telling us that uh, they expect to stay active. Um, so we, we keep designing new ways for them to do that. Um, and uh, we're now at a point, you know, our state is doing a little bit better with containing. So we're now to the point that we're reinventing and having more local competitions, very, very small competitions, maybe 10, 15 people, um, but getting two teams that are fairly close geographically to come together. Um, but it's, it, the athletes are forcing us to, to stay on top of it. But mostly it's about keeping and maintaining the sense of community. Um, and keeping them so that they're active and they feel like they're connected to Special Olympics and to their teammates, their coaches, their families. Yeah, definitely. And in some ways, and this is what we do here is, is the proof of that, this period brings us together in ways that we never knew possible. You know, even this idea of actually bringing global experiences together, which happens in conferences, in global events, is possible now because we are, we are virtual. It's much you know, cheaper, more affordable to actually accomplish this. And so, you know, while we are all, you know, suffering through this period, there are also some benefits for those who, who know how to seize them. So let's hear uh, more about this important topic, actually. Uh, Manisha, any thoughts about impact of COVID in, in, in your work or any work that you observed in India? Yeah, in India also, we are coping exactly with webinars, virtual trainings. And one advantage we have is we have switched to indoor games. A lot of uh, NGOs told me that they are what they are doing is involving parents and giving out some uh, play activities for the children, doing them through the parents. Pa they teach the parents and parents get involved in play with the children. So that is one way uh, to engage the children for sports. Uh, instead of uh, playing outside, children were like stuck and there was uh, really, we had, I was uh, volunteering for COVID helpline also. So got a lot of distress call from the parents who was really stressed out. But these kind of activities actually helped engage the children and reduce some kind of stress uh, with the children. They were much, uh, when during the period they were occupied, they were much uh, easy to control. And uh, then the day was, uh, when they get, used to get tired, the day was slightly subdued. The uh, mothers could relax in the later part of the day. But parent involvement became a major factor driving the sports or any kind of training. Uh, without uh, parent, like in future also, I feel the parents should be an integral part of uh, any kind of training, sports or uh, education, any kind of training, they should be major in, uh, majorly involved, not excluded. And one thing Andy Reid has pointed out, right, we call it Special Olympics. I think she has a valid point. It's kind of exclusive, <laughs> exclusion. But uh, that's the way, Andy. It is uh, called Special uh, Olympics uh, all over. I think we should change the name. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Mohammed, any thoughts about, about this, Mohammed? about COVID? Actually, one of the questions came from Morocco. Yeah. yeah. Donc, uh, for, for, for the Moroccan experience, like uh, Special Olympic in all the world, I am translate the FIT5 in Arabic. The same program in Special Olympic, I translate last, last week, and I give him all the athletes in our organization, 100 athletes, I give him to practice sport at home with her family, not alone, because this is, I, for me, I insist for, for a question of inclusion. The athlete, we he can do sport, but with her brother, with her neighborhood, and with her mom, with her father, not at home. I translate this, I, I use the fate five. 
and the same and same time I will be the coach and the educator. You must be believe what do you do because sometimes educator and uh, coach because COVID nineteen I can't go to work. But if you can't go to work, you must be stay in contact with with the athletes. You you, you don't leave him alone because the person with disability you can't let him alone at house one mouth two mouth three mouth you have other problem the other psychological problem don't you must be have a contact with athlete with phone here in my organization we have lots of poor family who can't have contact don't association she is going to ask in money for the sponsor and buying the phone the smartphone for for 20 to 25 family and I am going to the all the all the quartier of Rabah to give this phone of this family but to stay in contact with this family look I give him a possibility to training with the group with three person via whatsapp I train in any day with the group with two three five group to whatsapp to to practice sport and I search in the other programs for example, the Special Olympic of Emirates of Arabi, you have a beautiful program to, 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 to play in with the, with the athlete uh, by, by Microsoft Teams. Look, I ask him the, the friend, Kush in Emirates, you give me the link and I give him the athletes, Moroccan athletes. Look, with Egyptian, also with Egyptian athletes, I have a contact a program with the coach. We have created a group WhatsApp with the coach, Arabic coach, Arabia Saudi, Emirates, Egyptian, Moroccan, and uh, change the idea. I have an idea. You, you have it. You can help me. I can help you. Look, you must be stay at home. It is tell all the time COVID nineteen, COVID nineteen. Yes, COVID nineteen exists, but you must be working. You must be going uh, because in the, the in the big world in the world. The, the, the person go work, the person love, the person uh, practice sport, but you must be COVID-19 and stay at home. You must be search the solution. You must be creative to help this person because if you leave him alone at home through four, four five months, don't you, you give him the problem, the psychological problem. This is, this is my idea. Thanks, Mohammed. Uh, now, before going back to, to uh, Anna, I have another question um, that actually was, um, you know, Stimati's question, uh, but I would like to kind of put a little bit of a spin on the question. So, um, you know, what you know, Timothy was asking is that how do we get societies to value what athletes with disabilities achieve? And, and you know, my, my spin on the whole thing is that how do we you know, in the process of working with persons with disabilities, how do you work on, in, in general, on, on society, you know, mentalities, preconceived ideas, you know, things that might be uh, making your, your job more, more, more difficult. So in, in a little bit, you know, the advocacy, uh, you know, component of the whole thing. So, uh, you know, so let's start with uh, Imam, um, you know, on this question, um, and then we'll go the same thing briefly to, to uh, all of you um, as, as we advance. Well, as I said before, like, uh, when we, when we needed to, to tell the world and ex, ex, uh, like um, tell more about the people with disabilities and especially intellectual disabilities, we need to show, we need to integrate people more uh, with us. Uh, so we need, uh, we, we do more, uh, work, more competitions and more uh, fun games. We include other people with us. We start with uh, schools, uh, uh, inclusion and integrations. Uh, when uh, like uh, we start like with uh, young athletes uh, where with the small ages we start to introduce uh, uh, small athletes to to each other so they won't feel uh, different from each other through sports when they grow up together they will feel uh, okay with the idea and uh, we we make uh, awareness for people like we, we make, uh, yeah, there is a there is a little bit of a noise um, underneath. Uh, so let's go, let's advance a little bit. Uh, you know, Charles. You know, actually, this question was put in relation yes. to Namibia. Yeah. Yes. Yes. You know. Okay. Yes. All right. Yeah. I'll wait. Yeah, yeah. and uh, we make 
we make uh, also like meetings with the families. We make awareness for the families, for the people with abilities, and uh, for for uh, and uh, for for like uh, for other families. Uh, we include them together in the same meeting, uh, and we start to introduce more about the players and what they can do to share the ability, not the disability. Uh, we always show the ability of the player, not not to show them the disability. So that's what we always work on. Uh, yeah, we lost we lost your your sound, um, Charles. Uh, yeah, thank you. Um, society, in terms of reversing these stereotype behaviors, and you know, especially in Africa, these stereotype behaviors are, are so deep rooted in some of the countries that we've witnessed, as you saw from that video, and also in uh, in one of the countries there, what you call prayer camps. They believe that people with intellectual disabilities they 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 are possessed by demons, and and these people take them take them and take them to camps where they pray for them, to to heal them from uh, intellectual disabilities. Unbelievable, but these things happen. So to reverse those stereotypes, behaviors, and thoughts that myths that they have about intellectual disabilities, and I'll 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 mention this through what I witnessed when I was a coach in Namibia at one time, that we were failing to penetrate the government to make them understand that we need, you know, to be supported. So what we did, what I did was to, I persisted for the director of the, of, of the country to attend the national games and he be the guest of honor. So he agreed, he came to the national games. It was the first time in his life to witness and see people with intellectual disabilities on the field, participating, running. I, I witnessed this. He sat down before he went to speak, he shed tears and he called me, says, Charles, I am not crying because I'm, I'm pitying what is happening here. I'm ashamed of myself. I'm the director of the country and I'm looking at these athletes running and I've never put a penny down for them because I didn't know I was ignorant. So to cut the long story short, oh, by the way, from then on, the government in Namibia was extremely, extremely supportive in terms of uh, people with intellectual disability. The government created a position for marginalized people to, to support them. And we, we are doing this across Africa. We emphasize to, to our programs, special Olympics programs, that when you have games, invite your sports ministers, invite your potential donors. And by doing this, many of them are going back saying, wow, what I have seen today. So the only way, the most effective way of reversing these behaviors is by witnessing. If you don't see it and you just bring a paper and say, can you, they will not know. But if you bring them and they witness it, it changes the, the attitudes. That's the best way to change attitudes, to make them see that these athletes are playing soccer and some of them play better than people without intellectual disabilities. So why have we denied them the opportunity? Then they realize, they feel, they feel hey, let's, let's integrate them and start the inclusion program. Yes, and the passion we feel here in this webinar from you is probably the best ambassador of this, of this idea. So let's, uh, you know, got a couple of, you know, Manisha, same thing, you know, influencing, impacting hearts and minds at the, at the society level. Uh, you know, when it comes to um, integration of persons with intellectual disabilities. Manisha? Uh, I didn't get you. Uh, the voice broke. Can you repeat the question? Yeah, it's, it's basically influencing society as a whole, having an impact through the sports activity, through integration. You know, how every do we... Year, uh, every it's, year on Disability uh, Day, we, use, we have a, a sports day and uh, other activities. And uh, what uh, Imam said, it's really, that is the best way to spread the awareness. When the public and the government officials sees these children, I, I myself had this experience. There was a kid who was really, I felt he didn't require special school. He could manage with little help in a normal uh, inclusive environment. We have special schools and inclusive schools. But uh, the mother being very poor was not uh, being uh, entertained by the norm, uh, inclusive school setup people. 
so i also did the same thing i invited the principal over showed them the talent of these children and he was so surprised that uh, uh, they can perform dance they can perform sports they are very good in singing so then i proposed that i feel this child probably two class down if you include him in the regular mainstream school he will be able to cope with the, his studies and he is he can do better and uh, then he agreed to take him in and the mother was really grateful and uh, we hand held him we supported him for one year in that school by the end of that one year he was monitor of that class he was managing class he was managing uh, he was made prefect basically managing managing the movement of the students in the corridors so this is that is a drastic change when you expose the normal public what happens when uh, in our, especially in developing countries there is such so much lack of awareness their children are hidden they are uh, not uh, uh, given any identity they are not asked about their choices so it is like all is pre decided okay the child is not walking the child is not speaking take him to the therapy uh, take him to the doctor they do doctor shopping for 7 to 8 years and then they come to a special educator and then the child is assessed by that time that early intervention crucial period is over and there's very limited things that you can do with at the child who is 8 years or 10 years old so unless and until uh, we start uh, having these sports event and what i feel is ki some kind of career should come up like what happens the child keeps going for these special olympics for probably 17 years or 18 years of age and then they, it stops and during this period when he is winning medals especially in india uh, he is recognized with the mlas and the mps people sponsor him people give him money people give him gift uh, we had a case a uh, child won uh, the uh, money for uh, f- by participating in the special olympics and he uh, sponsored the uh, uh, operation of his father yeah from yeah. that money so that kind of things happen but after a certain age these activities stop there's nothing beyond 18 years or something so then the child is lost all that identity is gone that source of money for the family is gone so beyond 18 years if something can happen maybe uh, they become the trainers or they keep participating till uh, much uh, we have a older age group for these games yeah. so they keep participating they keep going out they are exposed that will really help what i feel some kind of career or some kind of regular stream of income will encourage um, more yeah definitely uh, so to to have room for another uh, question at least so, so i would like to go to dave and because mohammed touched on this topic before same thing obviously 30 years with the disability act changed perceptions and societal reactions in the united states to to a large degree do you still feel that there is a certain you know resistance difficulty challenge when it comes at the way that society looks at uh, intellectual disabilities dave yes there there's but our our problem is different from the rest of the world because you know outside the united states special olympics is kind of a A, a newer concept and certainly uh, working with this population is a newer thing so you're having to deal with it on a governmental level you're dealing it with an institutional level our problem is that most people in the united states think they know what special olympics is and they think they know what people with intellectual disability are capable of and because they saw special olympics in the 1970s or the 1980s and when we were not really focused on our on our athletes as athletes we weren't focused on their ability to be included into society and included into sports teams and all of that so we have to reeducate is as our problem so the the activity that i usually do is i will sit down and we have to reeducate ourselves as well our coaches and our families um are among the the biggest problems that we have sometimes because they think they know And so what I do is I say okay I want you to write down um I'm going to you know I'm going to show you some pictures of some athletes and I want you to write down what do you think this person is capable of doing what do you think this person needs from you as a coach or as a parent or as a government official or you know you know whatever and I want you to write that down and then I bring that person out 
and frequently that, and, and it's an athlete, it's a special Olympics athlete who may be a coach themselves. And they say, you know, we demand that the coaches who coach us know the sport and they treat us as individuals. We expect you to know what you're doing. Um, they say, yeah, I train six days a week, you know, and I train for an hour a day, you know, or two hours a day, and here are my times and all of that. And then I'll, they, they go through everything that is important to them. And then I say, okay, now compare what they just said with what you wrote down, you know, don't, don't prejudge what you need to be doing for this population. Listen to them. They can tell you what they need. We're, we're much more advanced than that. And then I can go into some of the data about the health disparities. You know, our athletes die 16 years earlier than they're supposed to, simply because people had preconceived ideas about what they were capable of and what was causing them to not be able to learn math, you know? And so then I say, this is a problem and we have to address it, but we will only be able to address it when we truly value them and their input and we look for their wisdom about how to work with them. So it has to be much more of a re-education for us as opposed to the initial education that you see kind of outside the US. Definitely, I think that. So uh, I appeal to you, since you know time is limited and, and questions are, are keep 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 coming, just please read also the, the chat room. Both the speakers and the participants keep connecting, and some of the questions have been addressed in the chat room, but others could be addressed in the in the in the future. Um, so let's keep this discussion going even beyond this webinar. So, Anna, now you have the floor. Yeah. Thank you, Vlad. Um, I want to ask you, as we mentioned, everybody, that um, coaches have a very important role in, in, in the lives of athletes. I want to ask if there are um, any special trainings for the coaches, courses for the coaches, and what kind of skills coaches should have to, be, to train uh, the kids for Special Olympics or just in general kids with the disabilities. Dave, Charles. <laughs> yes, no, thank you. Um, yes, we have a, a, a coaching um, we have a coaching program for coaches. We recruit coaches and we it's a it's a module which has uh, which is conducted in uh, four days when when before the pandemic uh, before we went to digital. And uh, the coaches are recruited from so many different uh, areas of life, for instance, uh, we look at coaches coming from, you know, the sector of teaching. We look at coaches coming from sports federations. They are already in sports. They are, they are already sports coaches or basketball coaches, soccer coaches, basketball coaches, badminton, whatever. And we orient them in Special Olympics. That is easier because you're not teaching them a sport. You are teaching them Special Olympics. And they bring that sport, that sports skill they, they already have to the organization. So that's what we focus on in terms of uh, training coaches. And uh, we, text, we take a census in, in globally in Special Olympics. And uh, in Africa, as an example, we have over 23,000 coaches across, across the continent, uh, meaning the Africa region. And um, the, the athletes themselves are trained on the field by coaches. And we are, because we're an Olympic sport, uh, we have... Uh, you know, so many sports that are, that the, all the sports that are Olympic sport, except for, of course, some, some combat sports. And then, and then the athletes train in those specific sports. A country has a choice, like a South Africa has 11 sports. They will have soccer, swimming, you know, aquatics, basketball, and so on and so forth. They have 11. So a country will develop according to their ability in terms of offering sports to the athletes. So if the country's capacity is smaller, they don't have the coaches, they'll focus on two sports, uh, football and athletics. So this is how, and, and those coaches train them and then they qualify, they, 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 it's not elite, it's based on mass. You know, they, they participate in the different divisions, by the way, because your level of disability determines your ability to, 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 to perform. So they might be in a division one, division two, three, or four. So a division one athlete cannot compete with a division four athlete, even if they're the same age and gender. 
So they are divisioned according to their ability and that's how they compete. And then if there are world games opportunities, national games, regional games, they advance to the world game, the regional games, provincial games, and eventually to the world games and participate in the world games. So there's that hierarchy of, of qualifying in, in terms of competition. But we emphasize on local competition where you have the majority of the athletes to, to participate there and we offer sports at, at that level. Thank you, Charles. Uh, Mohamed, can you tell us if you have any trainings for the coaches in your organization? Yes, of course, because in the in sports you have any sports you have a specialist, specialist of football, of athletic, of but for me it's 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 not off. You must be need the other because you play in with the with the person with special needs. You must be believe what do you do. You must be feeling because if you don't have this feeling, the other person, the other kids feel this. Don't you must be believe in your mission. I have my mission. I am I am I am a coach, but. I work with the person with, with disability. No, you, I must be know it's what type of disability because I work in my organization. I work just with the person with Down syndrome. I know what is the character of the person was the person with Down syndrome. But with the autist population, have another needs, another another things. The the person with EMC no, because disability it's not one. And the person, the, the same, the, all the person with Down syndrome, you, you, you find lots of, because only person, it's, 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 a, it's, it's single. Look, you must be, uh, know it, the, the, the psychology, the, 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 the life, the, the, the family, because sometimes I come to, to, to coaching my, my team of football. But I must be knowing because I have athletes. She has take two hours for coming to teach me. She is coming to child. I must be knowing this this small detail. If I don't know this, I give it, come to, 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 to you must be knowing the story of the athletes, the family of athletes. I know the family come to take two bed, two bus, don't have money. You take two, he's coming. You can't take him. Uh, you are coming late. Go go back. No, you must be understand family, understand athlete. If this quality only co only coach, you must be have this quality to understand the others, to give him a possibility to explain, to give him a possibility. And only coach, you must be searching to the psychology, the type of disability down. It's not autism, not AMC, not uh, not. Uh, don't. This is for me. It's very important. Thank you, Mohammed. Um, Manisha. Do you do your organization do trainings? Uh, in India, Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment uh, and Sports Ministry has a Kelo India program under which uh, Special Olympics Bharat is the nodal agency for training coaches. So they uh, ministry gives them grant and they uh, recruit. Uh, they actually. Uh, 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 do a pre-screening of the sports coaches and then they train them to train uh, persons with disabilities including intellectual disabilities for the various sports so that is how in India we work under that umbrella one nodal agency working pan at pan in day level and many NGOs themselves also recruit uh, sports coaches trained uh, by these uh, uh, centers and uh, have their own coaching centers. That is how it works here. Perfect. Iman, do you have anything to say about the training of trainers, educators, coaches? It's almost the same with everyone. Like uh, the background of the physical educators are they already graduated from uh, uh, from physical, uh, have a physical education degree. Uh, their basics are, phys are physical education. Uh, Usually, uh, we take uh, one or two coaches from each uh, NGO. We teach them the sport, and they will go back to their NGO and teach the other sport, uh, the other coaches, to how to deal with the, uh, the uh, to, to train them how to teach uh, this sport to the 
uh, that are athletes. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, Dave, do we have any online courses, models um, for the coaches, trainers? I we do. Yeah. Yeah, we, we, we have some online, and I think what, what's interesting as you listen to this is that, and please don't tell the rest of the United States that I said this, but we have the lowest threshold for skill for coaches in the world. Um, outside, outside of the United States, it is a very honored profession and, and a very serious profession, and in the United States, um, and I don't know why this is, but like... Charles described you know, his coach's training of four days. Ours is eight hours. Um, four hours of that can be done online. Um, and it's a very quick introduction to what is intellectual disability and how we do divisioning and all of that. Um, and then we do four hours of sports specific training because we assume that the people coming to us to certify as coaches have absolutely no sport background. Um, that's because in the U.S., our coaches tend to be parents, um, special education teachers, um, people who do not come from the sport world, and and so it's 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 very different. But and we see that when we go to our world competitions, you can see that the people from outside the United States are much better trained. <laughs> <laughs> they much the um and the and, and it's you know when I worked on the international level I was always just like oh my god <laughs> please don't let this be known um but it is it you know we do have the the technology piece down where yeah you can go to those classes um what we struggle with is continuing education how to help a coach go from from that such basic level to something that's actually meaningful um, what we've tried to do to fill the gap is we do try to recruit people who come from the sport federations um, to be kind of a master teacher um, to work with us with coaches. But, but yeah, we, we have some online courses. Um, it's just the question is whether what their value is. Okay, perfect. Thank you. And uh, I said none of that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> forgot already <laughs> okay so before the next question i want to ask our speakers to share your uh, emails on the chat so our participants can ask the questions um afterwards after our webinar is over and there is a question that, that if we need to let go the old picture talked a lot about inclusion and now we are like labeling the Olympics and we are saying special Olympics. Do we need to do that? So who will, who will uh, answer on that question? Sorry, what's the question again? Can you repeat? We, we need to label the Olympics special. Yeah, that is a very relevant question. It's more like excluding, I have also thought about it. That's why I pointed out Andy's question. We always call them special children. We always call them special Olympics. It is kind of excluding, but then how do you define? You need to define that we are different from uh, others and rules are different and uh, uh, sports are different. So uh, it's not about excluding, it is about differentiating more. It's not excluding them or if and, and someday we merge into olympics regular olympics that will be really good yeah. uh, and, and also of... to clarify sorry sorry i thought you yeah, had yeah. please continue please continue and also you know uh, special olympics has an agreement has a uh, assigned a protocol of agreement to the ioc because you can't use the word Olympic without, without uh, you know, that agreement with the IOC. So that agreement enables Special Olympics to use that. It's a legal agreement. And because we are on a, an Olympic organization, just like the Olympics, we have a four-year cycle of our games, winter games and summer games, and, uh, and so on and so forth. And um, so we, we, the, the agreement was was that the, the Special Olympics had to have the word special before Olympics. In, in, uh, it's, in the, it's in the general rules that that's how it's supposed to be, to be appearing. So it's, it's nothing 
you know, it's 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 a, it's an agreement, and that's how S I O C and S O I and Special Olympics agreed as to how the naming should be because of this agreement. In short, Dave, maybe you have an addition yeah. to that. Yeah, I th well, I think too another another um, idea to um, think about is that I know we get very excited about the concept of inclusion, and we think that inclusion is the goal. Um, and my, my work with the international level was all around self-advocacy. So I spent, I went all over the world talking to people with intellectual disability about this concept of, of inclusion. And in virtually every region of the world, a variation of this discussion happened. Yes, we think inclusion would be great. People could come to Special Olympics. And I said, well, I think what they're talking about is you going and com you know, competing and training in community sports or with sports clubs or whatever. And they were said, why would we do that? Um, we don't want to go because their people are mean to each other. They, we see what goes on you know, in mainstream sport. And sometimes we don't like it. We like the fact that we have a safe place where this is about us. It isn't about you and it isn't about us trying to be you. Let us be us and, and let us have our space. And so, well, our idea is, oh my gosh, we've, we've labeled them and we've limited them. Um, if you talk to them and not all athletes agree, you know, so certainly there is a, a various opinion about it, but many of our athletes like the distinction and they say, you need to get over the idea that I have to be like you. I don't have to be like you. And it's okay that I'm different. And it's okay that I learn sports differently. And it's okay that I even do sports for a different reason than you do. But stop trying to make me be you. And it was very powerful to hear that from all over, whether I was in China or Africa. <laughs> it's like... Like, you know, Actually, the beauty to right. them of Special Olympics is that. Actually, I agree with that. Not 100% exclusion, inclusion is possible also. Some people do need special care. Okay, I mentioned something. This is Kirsten Edwards. Um, I was diagnosed with intellectual disability in the early 80s in Trinidad and Tobago. And now I work here in SOI in Washington, D.C. My supervisor Dave Lennox and Ryan Murphy, my colleagues, and, and Charles Nyambi. But I just want to say, um, listening to the conversation, very great. Intellectual disability, as you know, Mr. Shriver told me, and Dave said it, be yourself. And uh, one of the things she told me was never let people put you in a box to define who you are. Because her sister, and she referred to her sister because she wanted me to remember where it all began. So, so for us not to lose how we get here. And second, and in, in, in sports, and I think for people with intellectual disability, something that I've been kind of pulling with because I always, I, I like to quote her because I always say she's like, a, a, you know, my mom. But I think the part of, we call athletes, we use the word athletes for everyone. And uh, I think into, I'm a person with intellectual disability first. My name is Kester Edwards with, in, with intellectual disability and I'm a Special Olympics athlete. That's, I am comfortable with. I'm not comfortable just being called an athlete. I am a retired athlete. I'm a staff member. I want to have a career. I want to have a life. I want to live like everyone else, as Dave's saying. So I am um, a retired athlete. If you can, you know, just as Dave was saying, just call me as it is. Don't put me into this special box. So I think we need to start identifying people. And Mr. Shriver always says this, people first. My name is Kester Edwards. I'm a person with intellectual disability. And I am a former Special Olympics athlete. And I'm not afraid to say that, even though, as Charles said, and Charles, thank you for saying it, intellectual disability is a, it's a blind, it's a, it's a, it's, you can't see sometimes in some people. And that's the undertow discrimination for people with intellectual disability in society. It's a really tough world to live in when you can't see something. 
So I so thank you, Ryan, for making this session. And I just wanted to share that because I don't want to suck up all the time. But thank you. It was very great. And I just want to say people first. Thank you. Thank you, Kester. Thank you. Thank you for raising your voice. It, it was great to hear from you. Thank you, Vlad. And I will go back to Vlad. Uh, fascinating conversation. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, there are plenty of questions in the chat. Andy again, Talar, Pelagia, Stacy, Marek, Slaken, Mandini. So uh, we are not going to be able to actually, you know, respond to all of them. We'll download the chat. We'll share with you the recording of this session. And our hope is that you are going to stay in touch with us, stay in touch, touch with one another. And, and some of the questions, you know, also need to be addressed in the future. But the most important thing we could do is to work together towards this amazing goal of, of actually addressing the needs and, and being in support uh, of, of people with disabilities in general, intellectual uh, disabilities, uh, you know, specifically in relation to what we discussed today. Just want to remind you that the webinar was part of the International Sports Programming Initiative of the State Department Sports Diplomacy Division and is produced by World Learning and Digital Communication Network. Thank you so much for being with us. The speakers, Charles, Mohammed, Dave, Iman, and Anisha, uh, all the audience, um, and uh, please, please, please stay safe. And, and hopefully, you know, one day, not, not very you know, long, uh, long time, we'll get to meet each other in person and, and, and share this experience. And plus, you know, doing the programs, exchange programs in persons again. Uh, goodbye and, and have a great, great day. Thank you. Thank you, bye-bye. Thank you so much. It was nice hearing you. Thank um, you. Bye. Thank Bye. you very much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. -bye.